Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode. Today I'm here with Trev, aka Trevor Lee Crusher, and today we're gonna be shooting with our first film cameras. Well, actually, my it's my second ever film camera. Dude, just in the back. Today's episode is sponsored by The Dark Room. All right, what the f is up, photo nerds? I get a lot of questions from people asking me if this premium lens or that premium camera is ever worth it. And most of the time my response is, how did you get my phone number? Why does this keep happening to me? Oftentimes a lot of that basic, more affordable gear is overlooked for some reason. So as the intro suggested, my number six in my MySpace top eight, Trev, and I went out to pound some glizzies. I don't know what that actually means, I just assume it applies. We decided to get back to the basics and use two workhorse film cameras that aren't really considered high-end or luxury when compared to the film photography icons like the Leica M6 and the Contax T2. But at the end of the day, all you need is ISO, shutter speed, and aperture, right? And a camera with a sexy shutter slap. That's pretty important. So I'm shooting with the Canon Elan 7. This camera came out in the early 2000s, this specific model. I just shoot it on aperture priority or manual. It has a great internal meter and it's a lot different than uh, your AE-1 in the sense that it's just an auto load. And I bought it for 50 bucks. You can buy them for around 150 to $200 now. The cool thing about this camera is it takes all modern day digital Canon lenses. Fully electronic, if the battery dies, this will not work. But the batteries do last a very long time. So Trevor would be packing his Elon 7 with some Ultramax shoved up its ass. But what about the big dog? I decided to shoot with something considered probably an ancient relic these days, recovered by Canon's archeological department. Do I look cool? Uh, today I'm going to be shooting with the infamous Canon AE-1, very popular starter camera. It's just kind of the camera that somehow became recommended to everybody. I picked this up about six years ago when I first started to get into film photography and I picked it up for about 70 bucks. Um, does your shutter speed go past 1 1,000th? 4,000. Wow. Yeah. Right, so quit bragging. <laughs> So with that, we headed out, determined to find out if these once powerhouse cameras could live up to our incredibly overinflated high standards for photography. As we move closer and closer to the Taco Bell Cantina, like two planets swirling a supermassive black hole, we realized it was only going to be a matter of time before we found ourselves sucked in by cheesy gordita crunches. But first, we had work to do. I had sh pictures of birds to take. As we headed down to the water, we started to wonder if taking candid photos of unknowing people in public was still street photography, even if it took place on a beach. In that case, was Robert Kappa doing street photography on D-Day? These are the important questions that people are too afraid to ask. Either way, I'd say that this is an area where Trev's camera wins. With autofocus and a 1 4,000th shutter speed on the Elon 7, my AE-1 just can't compete with that futuristic AI. At the end of the day, my Canon AE-1 has looks on its side, but if the old adage, brains before beauty, is correct, then why isn't the Elon 7 more popular? Maybe it's because we're all shallow, surface-level pieces of sh**. That being said, this photo here is the antithesis of sh**. I really like it. Kodak Gold nailed those brown and gold tones to a level never before seen, at least by me. With our friendship blossoming and our photography game growing stronger with every mechanical or electronic shutter slap, we faced our first obstacle. Do we cross the raging river or just simply die of dysentery? I did hate Canon FD lenses for a long time, but I think the 35 to 105 is changing my opinion. This lens renders things spatially in a way that I haven't seen before, and that's kind of groovy. The cool thing about this lens is that it's par focal, which means I can zoom in, focus, and zoom out, and it'll still be the same focus point. Huh, that's really cool. Do you mean it? No. This is an interesting comparison of basically the same shot. I think Trev not only nailed the shot better, but Ultramax made the colors look more natural overall. 
Not that it's a competition, but if it were, Trev would win. But I'm cool with that, because I know that I could probably beat him up. Actually, no, he'd probably kick my ass. Trev's in pretty good shape. But you know what? It's time for Kodak Gold to have its moment. And boom, here it is. This picture is one of my favorites. Houses in the foreground, surfers catching gnarly pounders in the midground, and a nice coastal background entangled in beautiful Kodak Gold colors. This image to me feels like what finding new music is like. Here are some more comparison shots of Ultramax and Gold. I think where Gold really stands out is saturation. The reds pop like an inflamed herpes pimple. For a long time, I thought Kodak Gold was that film stock for people that had given up on Portra 400's crazy price hikes. But maybe I'm wrong to assume that. After all, you know what they say about assuming. I'm a bad photographer and I didn't have any friends in high school. When I saw these Kodak Gold shots for the first time, I was immediately reminded of how much Gold is basically the love child of Kodak Ektar 100 and Portra 160. There's a nice warmth to it, like an antique kind of warmth. That and the colors are saturated as shit. On par with Ektar, but in a less purple kind of way. Let's be honest, Trev took this photo for one reason and one reason only. Well, what can I say? I know two things in life to always be true. Always check for toilet paper before you take a dump. And at some point in your film photography career, you're gonna flash your film. Not as in like you showed it your nipples, but more like you open the back of the camera before rewinding your film. Which is even more embarrassing when you realize that I did it in a video about getting back to the basics. That's only the second time I've ever done that. Here's a candid double exposure that Trev caught of me contemplating why I'm such a dumbass. I think another thing that the Elon 7 has on its side is that the lenses for that system are a substantial leap ahead in terms of sharpness and clarity. And the body of that camera is much less expensive than a body for the Canon AE-1, which is a less feature-rich camera. Truth be told, I think a lot of people are sleeping on those new generation film cameras that emerged right before digital sensors. A lot of the premium stuff like titanium bodies, sharp lenses, and abysmally low f-stops aren't really all that needed most of the time. You can likely get by with the basics. Or if you put in a little time and research, you can likely find a camera that fits the bill, even if it's a little ugly by your standards. All you need to do film photography is a camera that works and a beanie for some reason. Aside from that, one more thing you need for film photography is a lab that you can trust. And what better place than today's sponsor, The Darkroom. I've been using The Darkroom to develop my film for the past three or so years, and I couldn't recommend them more. The Darkroom is a traditional dip and dunk lab that develops C41, E6, and black and white film all in house. They also offer a wide variety of print options, including true black and white prints on Ilford silver gelatin paper. If you're forever chasing those rich film tones and want some level of customization, The Darkroom also offers three different scan options which are uploaded to your own personal darkroom account on their website, or even directly to your phone via their new app. With online ordering and a straightforward online shop, they make it easy to download your scans, archive your photos, and order prints all in one convenient place. Their online ordering is simple, fast, and even provides prepaid shipping options for sending in film for development. All you have to do is place your order online, put your film in a darkroom mailer, and drop that bad boy off at a mailbox. Simply go to thedarkroom.com or download the darkroom app to get started. Available now on Android and iPhone so they don't feel left out.
Anyway, as the day wound down and we headed back to the main drag, I realized it had been a while since I had violently shit my pants. So we made our pilgrimage to the holiest of temples, a Taco Bell cantina right there on the beach, where Trev and I could reflect on the day that we had just had. At the end of all the chaos, we learned an invaluable lesson about friendship and photography. It's not about how expensive your camera is. It's not about using the highest end gear. It's about the Crunchwrap Supreme Extra Large Baja Blast combo and a beautiful sunset. And just get whatever camera suits your needs. Who cares?